In most cases, when we introduce video into a PTE AV Studio presentation, we very often introduce some audio problems to solve. I can demonstrate that with these two still images and the video that I've placed between them. The sound that was recorded with the video is going to start and end abruptly at each end of the slide duration and it doesn't sound too good. So to be able to deal with this what we need to do is to separate the audio from the video and then we can edit the audio. So as you can see here I have opened up my little demonstration with just two still images and a video into the timeline. Selecting the video if I right click there's the command we need, and when we select it, that's exactly what we're given. I'm going to click on the orange volume line here and leave an audio key point. Then if I move to the front and do the same, I can drag down the volume, and I can do exactly the same at the end. So let's take a look at that in the mini player. Now I've added just three audio points here for speed, but we can add as many as we require, and most times we may use four in an audio like this. But the difference is a massive improvement, isn't it? Now at times we can do a little more than this. In audio visual, sound often needs to fade up so gently that we really could do with the sound being longer than the visuals from that video clip. The idea here is that perhaps the sound of the water, as an example, needs to start with a much lower volume before the video clip is even seen, and we may wish it to continue to fade out after the video has ended. Visually and through our hearing, it looks and sounds good. Now, with the sound separated from the video, we can achieve this. I'm going to move into the WAV file, right click, and I'm going to clear the audio key points. But then I'm going to right click again, because we can duplicate the audio clip. So now I've got two audio clips, but I'm going to drag them up so they both occupy the same track. So what I can do now, I can move this slightly to the left, I could just overlap that a little bit and make more of the crossfade. I could try to eliminate that peak of sound there, but that's going to be personal depending upon the project we're creating. But of course now I've got a much longer time for the sound to fade up. So if I put the audio key point here and I put another one, say, about there. I can drag that one down. We can live with the volume all the way along here, but maybe about here. I can have a nice fade out to about that point, assuming at some stage here we're going to have another image appear. Now I'm going to put a blank at the start just to give us a little gap. Then we'll take a look in the mini player and just see how it looks and sounds. As the cursor approaches this next audio key point, we can click that and move it further towards the right, making the fade in much more gradual, and we can do the same with the fade out too. Now I've found that in practice, quite often, a much longer fade in and fade out is required, but it is a personal choice. Now as you can see I've got a slightly different project here because another option we have once the audio is separate from the video, if it contains some background noise we can export the video as a freestanding file and within software like Audacity do something with that noise. To export this soundtrack to a freestanding file we use this option here. Now I've already done that and you can see the result up at the top left here. I've also opened this up into Audacity and dealt with the noise. All we need to do is just listen here for a moment to the original sound.
and we're mainly interested in that part there which is the background noise now let me drag this bit down just chop off that little bit at the start so they line up more or less the same and I'll drag that one up now we can listen to this one and you're going to hear quite a difference So when we're able to separate that audio from our video, it does open up lots of creative possibilities.